Hello, my name is Chauncey Wenner with Power Curve Inc. And this is video three of the free tutorial series of Wildfire 5 for top down design, creating and using layout files and parameters. In the last video, we left off with a complete project skeleton that we had designed um, for a rocket. And in this video, what we intend to do is breathe some actual engineering importance to it. Right now, it's just a well-constructed geometry where the, where the geometry is built relative to each other so that it's nicely parametric. And let's test that real quickly. As we said, one, uh, the, one of the predominant requirements for any new rocket being designed is will it adjust to the payload. So this is the payload fairing on the outside. And so what we would hope is that if we edit this um, to some new height, let's go 300, we would hope that the fairing would automatically realize it has to get bigger. So let's now see it crashes. Let's give it a chance to regenerate. And it looks like that's working just fine, maintaining a tip distance. Uh, we would also expect that if the payload could easily be required during the course of a you know, multi-year development to get either wider or smaller various, for various reasons, we want to make sure we leave some room for men to be operating in here and working. So we'll go to this and let's make it, uh, I don't know, 150. Uh, and we would hope that this gap opens up, and that seems to be working fine. I notice there's a little bit of an issue with the air fairing, but that's a spline definition, so that's not really a problem, although it would be an issue that would have to be adjusted. Let's undo and undo and get back to that. And then the other thing that we would hope to for sure be flexible is we know that as our design um, progresses, there's likely to be refinements in the fuel load that has to be carried. And in fact, analysis may want to alternate between trying to use fatter stages that are shorter and maybe stouter and stiffer versus narrower stages, which may have the same overall volume, uh, but will have to be longer in order to accommodate the fluid. So those are two things we would expect to, our, our uh, project architect to be able to accommodate in the skeletons. And so we'll in fact go edit this thing and let's make sure that works properly. We're at 120 inches. Let's go 200 inches for ha-has and that's all outside let's give it a chance to rebuild the logic and that looks like that works and notice uh, there was it was easy to anticipate that maybe we would want different diameters for the different stages and so we had, end up getting a kind of a conic adapter in here so that works out great and the last thing we really need to test is that if the fuel volume for the upper stage needs to get bigger um, does that going to adjust? Let's adjust that to maybe 135. Notice it right now crashes through the load path. The load path being this curve line here. Let's build a regenerate. And it looks like that's working just fine too, maintaining a certain angle for, for load and all that. So the model is behaving fine, but we haven't really, you know, this is just good geometry and good CAD development, and that's a great start. But what we want to do is the, the project architect can certainly anticipate parameters that are CAD relevant that really should be shared throughout the project. And we do that with a layout file. And let me undo a couple of these things here. Doesn't look like it wants to undo those. That's fine. Um, so we're going to do that with a layout. And I've started a layout for us. There's nothing, nothing magical about starting a layout. It's under file. Oh, I guess I use the new one always, the, the new button here. And there's a create a layout. But what I've done is I've added a parameter, or I've added a, 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 a format to that. Here's my company. Uh, there's the website if you want to see the other tutorials. Um, and I've added a parameter table that will automatically expand as new parameters are added, giving us a chance to add some detailed notes for those. So let's go to the parameter table. And here we see we've already created one parameter called diameter for the stage one fluids and we need one other diameter which is going to be for the stage two fluids and again it's really this is going to come from propulsion people as a project engineer or, or architect I don't need to know the actual numbers it's certainly very easy to anticipate straight out of college the need for these particular parameters the values can come from the experts so let's go ahead and add one more and I'm going to call it uh, diameter for stage two fluids. And I am making an assumption here that could be broken in the future if I want, 
that both the fluid in the accident tanks or the fuel in the accident tanks are going to share the same diameter. That does not need to be the case, but it is certainly what I would anticipate, and so that's how I'll start out. And for stage two, we're going to set this to 120 inches and say OK. And if I regenerate my table, this is the beauty of pro report tables. If you haven't used those, they're very useful. That automatically expands my table, and then I have an opportunity to add comments on what units I'm referring to, and then a little bit more detailed description. But this is really all we have to do here. I'm going to save this. What we now need to do is we've got the parameters defined that are the only two we need at this point in the project, and we need to now pump them into our skeleton model. All right, so how do we use those? In the skeleton model, I have to say, I have to basically tie it to the layout, and that's done under File Declare. And then over here, that's probably off the screen, I'll move it over. I get a bunch of options to deal with layouts. I want to declare a layout, and it lists the only one in the folder for me right now, which is the Project Architect Parameters. Okay, and we see this note up here that says that the scale now references values in layout parameters. So now it's our opportunity, or now we have to actually use those parameters. And so we'll come down here, and I notice there's a couple things. Well, let's take care of that. I uh, didn't anticipate this, but that's great. This is what happens in real life. Um, I'm going to first establish, um, well, let me show you something first here. So now if I look under the parameter tables of this particular skeleton, I will actually see those two parameters are here before, and it indicates that the source of those is coming from a layout file. Okay, And if I can remember these names, it will be a little bit easier for me, a little quicker for the demo. So let's go ahead and remember that, Diane S1 Fluids. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this item, Edit, and I'm going to actually double click on here and I'm going to say that I want this to be my stage one or diameter underscore stage one underscore fluids and it says do you wish to add this relation to so d75 and you can give that a more useful name if you want to it's not really worth the time to generally I say yeah I want that to become a permanent relation and notice it jumped back to 150 from whatever I had it alright and then we're also going to say that this one and was it currently 135 we'll double click on that one and call this one diameter stage 2 fluids do you want to make this relation yes I absolutely do and that now goes to 120 and let's regenerate now what I noticed I hadn't done yet is and I absolutely should is that I have not forced this the oxidant tank to have the same diameter as the fluids tank and so this is just done with a relation uh, I'll do one of them and there's no need to really show how to do the second one uh, so let's go ahead and edit our relations tools relations we should always add a comment assure Sure, uh, stage tanks have same diameter, and then we can pick on this one and say that this is D65. I'll double click on that one. That whoop, that brings it into here. Got a few too many of those. Has to equal, and I want it to equal. I can either set it equal to, maybe that's the easiest, I could actually set it equal to the above diameter, but really what's clear now that I think about it is to go ahead and write diameter underscore, let's see, we're in stage 2, S2 underscore fluids, and we'll do the same thing with the oxidant tank in the lower stage, which is stage 1, and there's a D84 equals diameter stage one fluids and then we should verify that everything's fine it says everything's okay and we should see this one snap out to this diameter 
once we ask it to regenerate. And there we go. We now have a, a fully functioning vehicle skeleton model. That's what I really wanted to show to you. And what we will show in the next video is how to then start. This is a single skeleton. We have not had to even be concerned with what the various assemblies and what the bomb structure of the production bomb needs to be yet. In the next video, we will have to start being concerned with that. And we will start pulling appropriate geometry from this single skeleton and we'll split it out into the multiple skeletons which are necessary to drive the actual production geometry. So that finishes today's video. I hope you found it useful and please visit our website at www.powercurve.org. Thank you very much.